Al-Quddus, the Holy, the Blessed. If you want your family to be blessed, this is a way you have to know. Al-Quddus is the Holy, the Pure, and the Blessed. The first meaning of Quds is purity. And so Beit al-Maqdis is called the purified house. Quds means to purify or to sanctify. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Quddus, it indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's pure in his essence, and he's the one who's sanctified by his creation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels that he's going to create on this earth in Surah Al-Baqarah, a khalifa, they said, are you going to create on this earth those who would create mischief and spill blood? While we exalt you with praise and we نقدسلك, meaning we sanctify you. And so Beit al-Maqdis is the purified house and Al-Quds is the purified city and Al-Ard al-Muqaddasa is the holy land. And Ruh al-Quds, the angel Jibreel, is the Holy Spirit. And so this name inspires that we purify our hearts, that we purify our actions, and that we purify our worship because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Quddus. But there's also a second meaning to this. You know, I'll be honest that when I learned this second meaning, Al-Quddus went from one level of rotation to a very high level of rotation in my dua because Al-Quddus also means the blessed. And so Bayt al-Maqdis is not just the holy sanctuary or the sacred house, but the blessed house. And Al-Ard al-Muqaddas is not just the holy land, but it's the blessed land. And Al-Ruh al-Quddus is not just the holy spirit, but the blessed spirit. And Al-Quds is not just the holy city, but it's the blessed city. And what does blessed mean? What does Baraka even mean? Baraka means ziyadatul khair. It means an increase of goodness. And so anytime you want an increase in goodness, you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name Al-Quddus. So if I want Baraka in my rizq, I call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name Al-Quddus. If I want Baraka in my relationships, then I call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name Al-Quddus. You want your lifespan to be blessed, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name Al-Quddus. We want blessings in every aspect of our lives. And so we should be calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his beautiful name, Al-Quddus. And so what are some of the takeaways of this name? The first that I want you to know, Salman al-Farisi and Abu Darda were paired together by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And Abu Darda was a scholar from the Ansar. He was a jurist, he was a judge, he was a reciter of the Quran. And it's said that he's one of the few that memorized the entire Quran during the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So him and Salman were incredibly close. And their interactions and the narrations and the stories are very beautiful. But one I'm about to share with you, Abu Darda becomes a judge in Damascus. And Salman al-Farisi is on the other side of the Muslim frontier, he's in Iraq. And Abu Darda writes a letter to Salman saying, Halumma ila al ardil muqaddasa. He says, Come to the Holy Land. It makes sense, right? Like, who of us wouldn't want to live in one of the cities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the lands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed? But Salman writes a letter back to him and he says, Inna al arda la tuqaddisu ahada. He said, Land doesn't make anybody holy. Amalu. He said, But the thing that makes a person holy is their actions. And that's reported by Imam Malik in the Muatta. So what Salman is reminding Abu Darda and teaching us is that it's not about where you live. You know, you can have a, one person who's growing up in the shade of the Kaaba, could be living there their whole lives, and they could be incredibly distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you can have another person who's living in Sin City, Las Vegas, and they could be a walking wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They could be a close friend of Allah. Land doesn't make anybody holy. But what makes a person holy is their actions. You know, I have a, a poem that I wrote about the story of Salman years ago that goes, the scent of the city is beloved to me. My home built on the Silk Road at the intersection of art and brilliance. We worship with passion. Our fires are always kindled and I'm its keeper. In a land of princes, poets, and sages that captured fantasy for ages, the marvel of mankind, Persia, and yet beyond the wisdom of philosophers and the luxury of our carpets and linen and the beauty of our women, that is paradise on earth. But places don't make people holy. And so that paradise I left, and it was a choice I would make a thousand times again as I wandered the Arabian desert, my diet transformed to one of dates and discolored water in a place that has nothing except something that's worth everything. My nobility stripped from me, entering a new life as the most peculiar slave. For the strangest slave is the one who chooses bondage to be free, chooses bondage in a foreign land, all for the chance of laying wary eyes on a man with but a glance who will guide me to be free. And when I see him and bask in his presence, it will all be worth it. They say that my story is of the greatest tales that has inspired generations of truth seekers. I tell them, places don't make people holy. It is our actions that do. Remember that. 
And the last thing that I want you to know is what is reported by Ibn Majah. The Prophet Sallallahu when the Muslims who had migrated to Abyssinia came back and they came back to Medina. They had left in Mecca and years later they came back after the Prophet Sallallahu had migrated to Medina. And Rasulullah Sallallahu asked them a very beautiful question, which is, what was the most amazing thing that you saw in the land of Abyssinia? And so a man responded to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, the most amazing thing that we saw is there was a nun who was walking by and she was carrying a vessel of water on her head. And a young man from behind her, he pushed her down until the vessel broke. And when the lady got up, she said, you will come to know, O traitor, talking to the young man who pushed her, that on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets up the kursi and hands and feet talked about what they used to earn, you will come to know about this affair between me and you very soon. She's threatening this young man with the Day of Judgment. On the Day of Judgment, we're going to find out. We're going to solve this problem between me and you on the Day of Judgment. Not now, on the Day of Judgment. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comments on this. And he says, Sadaqat, Sadaqat. She's spoken the truth. She's spoken the truth. كَيْفَ يُقَدِّسُ اللَّهُ أُمَّةً لَا يُؤْخَذْ لِضَعِيفِهِمْ مِنْ شَدِيدِهِمْ How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يُقَدِّسْ How can Allah purify? How can Allah bless a people who their da'if, the weak of them, do not have a mechanism to secure their rights from the strong. And so the lesson is, if you want your family to be blessed, if you want your community to be blessed, if you want your country to be blessed, no matter what country you're from, and you say, God bless this land, then you have to realize the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, how can Allah bless a community where the marginalized, where the weak, do not have a mechanism to secure their rights from the strong. So the takeaway that we have from this name is that if I want my family to be blessed, I have to make sure that the strong in my family do not override and overrule and overrun those who are weak. We all have people in our family. Some are the dominant personalities. Some are the strong personalities. We have to make sure that the weak amongst us also are able to secure their rights. We all have communities that are stronger than others in our societies. We have to make sure that the weak amongst us are able to secure their rights because otherwise the Prophet Sallallahu says, how could Allah bless a people who do not give the weak a mechanism to secure their rights from the strong? We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Al-Quddus to free Al-Quds. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Al-Quddus to free Al-Ard al muqaddasa And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Al-Quddus to bless our lives and bless our families and bless our nations wherever we are.